All right, guys, what's up? It's Kyle Hunt, Hunt Fitness. I'm here with Mike Bledsoe today from Barbell Shrugged. Excellent opportunity to have this interview. Uh, Mike, just uh, maybe some people that uh, don't know who you are, maybe just give them a little bit of background information. Oh, jeez. You got a background. That's, uh, that's pretty uh, broad. It uh, is broad. I've been doing uh, CrossFit since 2007. Uh, I've been running a CrossFit gym since then. I've been coaching, competing. Uh, a couple years before that, I was weightlifting, uh, Olympic weightlifting. So I had a nice, uh, solid background of strength and good technique. Under my belt, I had a good coach. Um, and then prior to that, I was in the Navy, and I did a lot of uh, running, swimming, and bodybuilder-esque type routines, something you might find in muscle and fitness. Uh, but I've been... I've been uh, training pretty hard since I was about 15. I'm now 32. Kind of run the whole gamut of fitness, you know, between uh, different sports and, uh, and different types of training. So uh, that kind of puts us not where we are now. Uh, I'm a I'm a 17 year. Uh, I'd say I've been training hard for 17 years, and uh, I got a degree in exercise science and. I found a lot of CrossFit coaches just didn't have like a deep knowledge base. So we started a podcast a couple years ago to help people out, just give good advice. And uh, that podcast actually, uh, which is Barbell Shrug, um, took off and uh, is now, uh, I won't say it's popular. It's a popular podcast. Definitely. And uh, yeah, I, th I think we're helping a lot of people. I'm having a, lot of, uh, a really good time doing it. I think that was a pretty good answer. I don't. I think all the questions are answered right there. We're, we're done. <laughs> Excellent. So, I guess uh, I kind of come from like the same background. I have an exercise science degree as well. I actually just graduated in May. When I first started, uh, you know, kind of was like the muscle and fitness style, like bodybuilding, powerlifting, and now I'm just starting to to switch over to more CrossFit style stuff, and kind of the my business as well. Um, so I guess I want to ask how uh, for someone who isn't necessarily coming from a, a starting CrossFit background, coming from, you know, bodybuilding or powerlifting, what's the best way to get up to speed in the fast amount of time with CrossFit? Uh, if you do have a background, if you don't. If you have a background in training, but not necessarily CrossFit. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it kind of it kind of depends on the, the training background. Mm -hmm. So I find if I uh, get somebody from uh, an endurance background, somebody who's a triathlete or a marathoner or something like that, uh, a lot of those people just need to, like, really break down the movements, you know, just just learn how to squat and do yeah. that well. And, like, you know, pull the weights off and, and learn how to snatch and clean and jerk. And the focus is so much on technique and not so much on, like, you know, metabolic fitness, you know, trying to, mm -hmm. you know, grow their engine or anything like that. It's more about teaching those people to slow down because most of those people are in the – camp of more is better yeah and and, they, and teaching them intensity a little bit so keeping the duration of of, uh, of workouts and uh pretty short and uh and very technique oriented so if they're going to spend a lot of time doing it that way if somebody comes from a strength background uh especially if they have good technique so like you know you could have come from a strength background you know a lot of football players come from a strength background and their technique is not great. They're really good at football, but what what you would never guess that from what happens in the weight room. Uh, so a lot of those guys have to focus on technique as well. Um, and then uh, you know, if you got a weightlifter or a high technique powerlifter, uh, a lot of those guys they just need a little tweaks on movement type stuff. But uh, those guys usually introduce them to some longer stuff and teach them how to like pace a little bit because find the most powerlifters and. And uh, weightlifters, especially, don't know how to not go fast. Yeah, well, right? I mean, their whole sport is around you know one rep. You know, it's yeah, speed. It's all about strength and speed, and why worry about anything else? Yeah. Do you do you think uh, coming from an Olympic lifting background is probably the best transition to be a good competitive CrossFit <laughs> athlete? Uh, yeah. I mean, you know what? Uh, I, I would say like my background was. Like, if I could think of an ideal way, because I had, like, that bodybuilder and, and, like, endurance athlete thing, and then I went weightlifting, and then I went CrossFit. Uh, as far as movement goes, and, and movement is king, uh, I, would, I would say, like, weightlifting 
Weightlifting and or gymnastics is pretty ideal. Um, I, I prefer weightlifting because weightlifters are are more full body strong. Yeah. Than a gymnast, they're usually gymnasts are you know very upper body dominant, and then a, a lot of gymnasts have a whole, it takes them a long time to get pretty strong lower body. Yeah, gymnastics is one but, thing I wish I did when I was younger. I always wrestled when you know all throughout high school and when I was a little kid. Uh, but gymnastics, I think. It transfers to a lot of different sports, not just you know CrossFit. One of the things that, that drew me to CrossFit was just the athleticism involved. You don't really see that. As, well, in Olympic lifting you do, but in like the bodybuilding and powerlifting scene, really there's not as much athleticism in, involved. Is that what kind of drew you to CrossFit? I knew you were an athlete your whole life too. Yeah, uh, you know what? It, I got drawn to CrossFit, so I discovered it in 07, so I was 20. I was about 26. I was 25 and I was turning 26. And uh, I'd been training for about a decade at that point. And, you know, most of my workouts were, you know, the bodybuilder nature. Uh, well, I'll say this. I discovered weightlifting eight years after I started training. And that was like the whole snatch and clean and jerk thing just blew my mind. Yeah. And then, and then when I did nothing but weightlifting for like two years. So when CrossFit came around... I took some time off from weightlifting. I was feeling a little burned out. Uh, I wanted to do something fun. And what drew me to CrossFit originally was how fun it was. Yeah. And I did CrossFit really hard for, I think it was seven months. I, I did a lot of, uh, actually, I was a lab rat at the University of Memphis quite a bit where uh, they did a lot of tests on me. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> I had a lot of things like uh, I had my VO2 max. I had a, a legitimate uh, vert max test, you know, on a force plate. I had uh, my uh, I had done wind gate tests for like anaerobic capacity and power and stuff like that. So I had like, and then I, I knew what my lifts were and my back squat and stuff like that. So I did cross it for seven months. And I was like, well, I feel good. I feel better. I feel more athletic. I'm leaner. Like, I just, everything feels better, but, like, let's look at the data. So I was able to go back, and for my senior my senior project, I actually took all the previous data, data from seven months before, and then I took, uh, I went and tested everything afterwards, blood work and everything. Uh, and uh, across the board, I saw improvements, like, all the way across the board. There wasn't, like, my strength didn't, didn't go down. Like, there were certain things that just didn't go down. Than I thought might, yeah. But everything had gone up considerably, including like VO two max, you know, max back squat, you know, things that like someone who is an experienced athlete wouldn't see simultaneous gains. Yeah, I saw the simultaneous gains, so it went from something that was fun and made me feel good to like something that had real efficacy, and that's kind of like when I was ready to pull the trigger and go deeper into CrossFit. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of the spot I'm in right now, you know, really it's, you know, I've been training pretty consistently since I was 16, so, I mean, it's only six years, but still it's kind of, when you're doing the same type of training, it gets, you know, it gets stale, you know what I mean? CrossFit's a new thing, it's it's fun, and I like the athleticism, and I like being well-rounded, I like to do a little bit of, a little bit of everything. Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, you got your hands in a lot of different things, you're running the gym, podcasting, what's your training look like right now? <laughs> Uh, well, truth be told, I actually don't run the gym that much. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the podcast uh, is really uh, a full time job for mm -hmm. me. I still I still look in on like gym functions, and uh, you know, like we're having having to hire a new person. I'm definitely helping in the hiring process and stuff like that. But as far as daily operations, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, that's kind of not what I what I do. So mm -hmm. I think it would be. I wouldn't be able to train if that was the case. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm actually working around uh, some injuries right now. And uh, I train for about 90 minutes to two hours, mm -hmm. you know, five days a week. Uh, so my training's not at the volume's not as high as it used to be. Part of that's uh, age. Um, and then part of that is also uh, just how many hours of work. Like, yeah. Work is becoming a priority. So it's a little bit of, of work priority. And then that, but uh, if you're training two hours a day, five days a week, you're doing more than most. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've incurred some injuries over the last uh, year, 
hamstring and shoulder. So uh, I've been having to work around those. But uh, my lifts, my lifts are pretty much where they were uh, a year ago. I've been doing good maintenance, and uh, I hope, my hope is to. Uh, I got a, I got a nagging shoulder that if I can get it fixed by, you know, beginning of June, then I'd like to compete at a Nash weightlifting nationals yeah. here in the U S come July. So, uh, my training actually is very weightlifting oriented. Yeah. I, I throw in some CrossFit conditioning stuff, short stuff. Yeah. But, uh, majority of my stuff is weightlifting. Yeah. Awesome. I also <laughs> kind of want to switch gears a little bit and talked about training and kind of go into more of the business side of things. Uh, I run an online training company, basically. And like I told you in the email, I basically worked with a lot of physique athletes, powerlifters trying to get strong. Now I'm trying to switch over into more of the CrossFit you know, style uh, coaching. Uh, you guys offer remote coaching as well. I was just wondering what you think is the best way. I mean, one of the things I, I try to focus on is whenever – Whenever you want to market towards any particular niche, you have to get in front of that niche. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, how do you think it's the best way to go from, you know, outside of the CrossFit industry and then trying to get in front of that CrossFit market? Mm. Yeah, I think coming in from the outside, I think that you have like a, you have something to offer because mm -hmm. uh, I'd say a lot of people that have only known CrossFit, you know, the you're only hearing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. But if you get somebody who comes from a bodybuilding or powerlifting or weightlifting or even an endurance background or something like that, they bring their own experiences in and can, people can really benefit from that. So mm -hmm. I think, for instance, for, for you, uh, I think people might, it might be refreshing you know, if mm -hmm. you have that bodybuilder or powerlifting type experience and that you know how to get people strong, you know, mm -hmm. or you know how to get uh, guys that are undersized. I mean, you can look at the games and you can see that the average weight, height and weight is like 5'9", 184 pounds. If a guy weighs 150 pounds, you know, a guy like you knows how to get guys bigger. I mean, mm -hmm. that's one of the things we specialize in as well. Yeah. But, you know, I, I think that the best thing you can do is – you know, go towards your strengths and build your niche there um, and, like, stay true to yourself. Um, I, I'm friends with uh, Zach Evanesh. Yeah. Up in, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that guy. Yep. Yeah, he, definitely. Man, he's a true inspiration in yeah, regard awesome. to, like, uh, you know, kind of following your true self. And uh, one of the things that we found was, you know, because we weren't CrossFitters first, what we found is when we, we just started doing a podcast and then the people that ended up liking us ended up being like the audience, you know, that those were our people. And then when we just, we sent out surveys and said, Hey, what do you want to see? Like if we were to offer something, what do you feel like you need the most? And what we did is we just listened to them. So, you know, we we're on camera, we're on podcast and we're just being ourselves and the people who are attracted to us, happen to be and I think this is would be the case with most people the same people who you're going to enjoy coaching and then they're just going to tell you what they need and then they're, they're going to be attracted to you because you have something that they desire and they want so I think that's the best way I, I know that's kind of like a, a very like conceptual way to approach it but yeah. that's really how we did it um, and I think that's I think if more people did it that way they would they would like serve the customers much better well yeah i mean i agree i actually i wrote a series of articles well two articles on the first one was what bodybuilding can learn from crossfit it was really popular you know talked about some stuff then i switched it around and what um crossfit can learn from bodybuilding and one of the things i was saying is um you know going through periods of your training block focusing on hypertrophy and you know kind of yeah. like what you were saying is you take someone who's 150 pounds they're not going to be big enough, you know, to really be able to compete, you know, in the games or in regionals. So going through, you know, taking some time off, maybe traditional CrossFit training and going through a, you know, like 12 week training block, 16 week training block of, you know, a hypertrophy focused program is going to, you know, obviously going to show some, some benefits. Yeah. And, uh, I, I used to be like, 
I used to make really big swings, but like I, I'm a big fan of going into phases like that where the focus is on that. Still throwing in some conditioning. Yeah. Throwing in those movements that really aren't conducive to building muscle, but uh, throwing them in here and Still there. Still doing some gymnastic stuff, body weight yeah. movements. Yeah, but the bulk of the volume be like that bodybuilder esque, like eight to twelve reps. Yeah. Do some tempo work, the stuff that you know builds muscle, but may not build speed, may mm-hmm. not be the best for aerobic conditioning, whatever. But if you can spend, you know, twelve weeks, and I kind of, but I, I really like the twelve to sixteen week time frame. Yeah, me too. Because that's actually a super common flaw with CrossFitters uh-huh. is they'll do a program for a month, four weeks. You know, yep. Tiny object syndrome. <laughs> I do a program for a month, and they switch gears. I'm like, oh, you didn't even do it long enough to get the results you needed. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, you see that a lot. I mean, you see that in you know a lot of different sports. You know that you follow a four week program. Ah, it got boring. I'm you know jumping programs you know left and right, and it's like, well, you didn't even give it time to to make adaptations to make changes. You know, minimum twelve weeks, really. Yeah, I think I think crossers are attracted to CrossFit a lot of times mm-hmm. because of the variety. Oh yeah. When you throw like a progressive system at them mm-hmm. for longer than a month. I really think what's happening is people get bored. Yep. If they're so used to the variety, but they'll make up something else in their mind for the reason why they're switching. Oh yeah, it's never that they, they're bored. And they like they justify it somehow by they'll come up with something that's, that sounds a lot better than yeah. I got bored. Uh huh. Oh yeah, definitely. A lot of times when I'm doing, you know programming like that maybe i'll only program the strength work and then allow for more variability on conditioning or accessory movements i mean i think maybe that's the the way to approach people like that because i mean even me at times i'm i'm more you know i like to stick to programs but i also you know i kind of get bored as well like anybody else so sometimes i even for myself i just program some strength work and then allow for for some you know variability in the exercises or whatnot yeah, the, yeah, I'm I'm just as bad as anybody. And I, yeah. I think that's why I have a little bit of that insight. Is I, I'm so quick to get bored with a program, and uh-huh. for me to stick with something for four months basically takes me signing up. I have to be registered for a competition. Yeah, for me to like, stay consistent, and yeah, that's probably what I'm supposed to do is sign up for something. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, I mean, me too. Plus, I'm I'm always trying to you know learn, and I find something new. I'm like, oh man, I really want to implement that, but it's like, well, I got. Eight more weeks of this program. Well, I've already done four weeks. That's, that's you know that's good enough. I might as well just try something else. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the curse of uh, always wanting to obtain more knowledge. Oh, it is. You know, the more you know, the more you want to try to implement, and then sometimes you, you know, you you try to put push too much into one program that you don't really know what variable really was was working, and you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell people like ninety percent of the program I write is. You know, we know it works. Yeah. Time tested. Other coaches have tested it. We've tested it. We know it works. The other ten percent of the program, uh, that's guinea pig shit. Yep. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. A lot. Of, another thing is, you know, even even with my own programming, sometimes, you know, coming from an exercise science background, I really like to read research and stuff. So yeah. sometimes I even get a little bit too into my own programming, and sometimes you got to take a step back and just say, you know what. Training hard trumps everything, you know. You can have the best program, but if you don't follow it and you don't follow it hard and train hard, it doesn't matter, you know. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we like to say is uh, the best program for you is the one you believe in most. Yep. Yeah. Put in the work, you know. It's You're never going to find the perfect program. No, there is. You know, and, and people have that. I, I call it like a, you know, it's like a syndrome, you know. You're always chasing that you know, the most optimal training program or the most optimal nutrition program or, you know what I mean? And and you're never going to find that. There's never going to be the most optimal. You just got to find what's going to be best for you at this moment, you know? That's another thing yeah. is, you know, you get people following these these training programs and, and they'll try to compare them. Like maybe is, you know, a small off better than this or, or is, you know, five times five better than German volume training, whatever, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. well, you're asking the wrong question. It's not is this program better than this program? It's what's best for you right now and your goals, you know? I think everybody Absolutely. throughout the training year is going to have different, you know, different structure, what's most, you know, optimal for them. Although I, I do think that if uh, somebody, anyone watching or listening mm-hmm. hasn't done a German, German volume training, you got to do it. Oh, yeah, you got to try that at least <laughs> once. <laughs> that's just, that's for the mind. That is for the mind. That 10 sets of 10, that's, that's brutal. 
That is brutal. Especially on squats. Do 10 sets of 10 on squats, and then that should be just like a entry-level, uh, I don't know, you just have to do that to, to train, you know? Yeah. yeah that's good. That's yeah. good volume. That'll build a good background for you real quick. Oh, yeah, definitely. It, it doesn't uh, not work. That's for sure. <laughs> 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 Shit. So, uh, just, uh, how did the, you know, Barbell Shrugged is, you know, pretty much kind of how I found out about you guys and kind of gave me, uh, like my first insight into CrossFit. So it's really blown up. How did, how did that all come about? How did Barbell Shrugged? Yeah, Barbell Shrugged come about. Um, well, we, uh, I've been listening to Rob Wolf podcast. Yep. And you know what? Ever since I started CrossFit, I recognized you know, there's definitely a lot of other CrossFit coaches that have degrees in exercise science and come from different backgrounds. But um, when I first started CrossFitting in 2007, 2008, uh, I didn't see a lot of guys from a weightlifting background. Uh, I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, get, being a guinea pig and hanging out with researchers. And, uh, you know, I, I felt like I knew more than the average coach when I talked to them. Yeah. I could tell. Uh, you know, at the time, my experience wasn't very high. I was only like 26, 27 years old. Uh, uh, you know, you can only get a certain amount of experience until you're like 40 years old, right? But I still like had this feeling like I really had a grasp on things. And then not just myself, but my business partners as well. Like everyone's got like a master's in kinesiology or something. Mm -hmm. Except for me, I dropped out of grad school uh, to, you know, run the gym and stuff like that. But I have really intelligent people on the show as well, Chris Moore. And, mm -hmm. and Doug Larson, and even CTPR camera guy, like he has a he has his bachelor's in exercise science as well. So uh, there's a there's a good foundation of knowledge, but then you know Doug trained MMA, wrestling. He's been under a good strength coach since he was 15. But Chris Moore, uh, he's been uh, you know D1 uh, football player and you know a thousand pound squatter. And in addition to like having a master's in kinesiology, I was like, anytime we would talk to the coaches, we found that, you know, we had something to offer for information. They had a lot of questions. We had a lot of answers. And then I was also getting a lot of phone calls with just questions in general from people. And so um, I was like, well, we should just start doing a pod. I was listening to Rob Wolf at the time. It's very, Rob Wolf is very, it's a good podcast. And it's very, but it's dry. It's very sciencey. Not a real, not a, a big personality podcast. It's not that entertaining. Uh, I'm sure Rob is probably a fun guy to hang out with and all. But uh, I I got introduced to uh, CTP, uh, one of my business uh, partners. And at the time, he was interning for us at our CrossFit gym. And he's like, Mike, you should listen to Joe Rogan. And I listened to Joe Rogan one time. And I realized that your show doesn't have to be perfect or or jam packed with content because Joe Rogan just talked about almost nothing. Oh yeah, talk about aliens and Sasquatch uh -huh. turning down Bigfoot and smoking weed and and like he has like the most one of the most popular podcasts in the whole world. Yep. I was like, oh, you can do whatever you want. Like it kind of like opened the door to like realizing, oh, we can do whatever we want. So I got with uh, CTP, who was interning for us. He had like a background in music. He's been in bands, so he understood, like, sound equipment and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So we're like, all right, what we'll do is we'll start podcasting. So we put, like, a microphone in the middle of the table. We had no name for the show. I would sit down with Chris Moore, and we would just bullshit for 45 minutes. And and uh, we started doing that. And it took about three months of just on and off recording. I talked to some people who made, like, uh, CrossFit videos for the CrossFit Journal. It kind of told me that audio is king. Mm -hmm. So, like, we went and invested, like, $1,000 in audio gear. And then, uh, at the time, my uh, my partner, who manages the money, is like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. I'm like, ah, uh, we need the audio. We need good audio. <laughs> so, we, we started, like, just kind of screwing around in my garage. And there's, like, some early stuff that we haven't published. Like, it's mm -hmm. really bad. Like, the first five, ten episodes were just terrible. We were drinking scotch on the show. Yeah. Which we thought would, like, help loosen the lips. You, but it really just didn't make for good conversation. you take that from uh, the Rogan podcast with uh, Rob Wolf? <laughs> I think they got... I, I remember watching that. I think they were both drinking in that one. Yeah, I think you have to drink to hang around Joe. Either drink or get high, one of the two. 
Yeah, if you're not if you're not smoking with him, you're gonna have to get drunk to to handle it. Probably. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I talked to Kelly Starrett when he went on Joe's show. Uh-huh. He said that he said that he just that those guys. Well, I won't I won't say what other people said. All that. <laughs> Maybe you can get Kelly to tell you about it. I, I'd rather not spread all these rumors online. Uh-huh. But uh, he he was surprised by uh, just some of the stuff that was going on in that podcast. But like. <clears throat> I had, uh, I listened to that and we were like, oh, we can do whatever we want. Mm -hmm. We started doing whatever we wanted. After a while, things started clicking. So we're like, we're going to do this every Wednesday. We're going to publish one every single Wednesday without fail because we know that people, like, that's the key to blogging and podcasts is being consistent. So we posted, started posting every Wednesday and we haven't missed an episode or a week in over 100 episodes now. So it's been, it's been really fun. That's awesome. It's funny you say that because. Literally, the first two podcasts they ever really started following was Rob Wolf and Joe Rogan. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. I uh, well, I started following Rob Wolf because, um, you know, being the paleo guy, and I actually, I, I read his book, but I'm not really, uh, I'm not really against paleo, but I'm not really a paleo advocate. So I started listening to yeah. his podcast almost because I feel like to really know something, you should almost read and try to get information on the opposing side. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, uh. I'm more of like a flexible dieting nutrition type person. But uh yeah, so I started listening to to Rob Wolf and been an MMA fan, so that's kinda how I knew of Joe Rogan and I you know, just cruising through iTunes, like, oh man, wow, he has a really popular podcast. Just started listening to it and it's you know, it's entertaining. But I, I really like podcasts because you can get a lot of information when you're just driving around that and audio books, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think the strict paleo thing. Uh, is great for sedentary individuals. Oh yeah. But the moment you start training hard, like hard, like an <laughs> athlete, yeah, you're gonna have to change something. You're gonna have to ditch uh, some of those ideas and maybe consume, uh, you know, some dairy can be beneficial, or mm-hmm. some rice, or you know, there, there's definitely. I, I think it's a good foundation for a lot mm-hmm. of people. But yeah, you're right. It's, yeah. You gotta you gotta have some flexibility there if you're gonna train hard. Yeah, I mean that's the thing for. For the average sedentary individual, you know, that's really overweight, has insulin sensitivity issues, yeah, a paleo diet is probably going to help them the most. But you taking a hard-charging athlete, a CrossFit athlete, or, you know, really any type of athlete that's training at that volume, you're just not going to be able to sustain that performance on a strict paleo diet, you know. It's just, yeah. I mean, there's a reason why not many uh, CrossFit Games competitors actually follow strict paleo, you know. I think there's a you know, a correlation there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. You gotta get a lot of car. It, it's a, it's a carb dependence. Oh yeah, it definitely is. Uh huh. It's, it's really interesting how so many people gravitate to, towards low carb. Uh huh. And, uh, and such a glycogen dependent burning, sport. Uh, that, activity. <laughs> that was like, you know, coming from a, a different background than CrossFit. That was like, you know, I, I really, nutrition, I mean, I love training, but nutrition is probably my, you know, number one interest. Uh, so coming into CrossFit from an outsider's perspective, I was always kind of, blown away that you know paleo is kind of the the nutrition template that you know crossfit athletes you know are kind of supposedly what they use because you know that would be like the last you know a low carb diet would be the last thing i would you know prescribe to you know, you know athletes and their crossfit yeah, athletes what, what's interesting is uh you know crossfit's official stance on mm-hmm. nutrition is more of a zone zone yeah mm-hmm. uh, and it's not paleo mm-hmm. so and even at, there was a point where they were doing like paleo zone and that's kind of you go to the journal, the CrossFit journal. That's that's like what they, what they advocate. Mm-hmm. Uh, which still, depending on your level of, I, I think if you're training one hour a day hard, mm-hmm. five days a week, I think zone mm-hmm. is probably a good start. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, people people definitely, you know, if they really want to optimize, they're gonna have to tweak to their individual needs, energy levels, size, yeah, you know, and different different types of body types and stuff like that. I always thought the you know, the main issue with, with zone is, which I kind of, you know, with the flexible dieting, it kind of goes along with zone, but I think they kind of go about it ass backwards than, than I go about it. Rather than, you know, setting a calorie level and then fitting strict percentages to that, flip it around, set a calorie level, and adjust macronutrients, and then, you know, the, the, so you're not really struck at, you know, the 40, 30, 30, or whatever zone is, you know what I mean? It's kind of... Yeah. Set protein, set carbs, set fats, whatever the percentages that you think are most optimal, you know? Yeah. 
a little different. Yeah, I, I think I think the most beneficial thing is just getting people to eat a little bit of everything at each meal. Yeah, day. exactly. Yeah, I do like that ba- the balance. Yeah, that's that's the most important part. But then after that, you know, people start tripling their fat and, uh-huh. and, and stuff like that. I'm like, we're not zone. Then it's anymore. not zone anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Or, or like a, a paleo zone, you're not, yeah, it's not really zone anymore. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think we covered some, some good stuff. Definitely, uh, you know, thanks for coming on. And, um, you know, you want to just say how people can follow you on Twitter or Instagram or, or whatever? Sure. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> so you can uh, just go to barbelltruck.com, check out the podcast. Uh, we do a video podcast. Uh, you can check it out on iTunes as well. Um, Check that out. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Barbell Shrug, uh, Facebook Barbell Shrug. Uh, we also run another podcast called uh, Barbell Business, where we we really focus on helping CrossFit uh, gym owners uh, kind of get through the initial uh, gym building uh, activities. So a lot of most most CrossFit gym owners aren't business people. Yeah. So we're, we're just kind of like that podcast is for that. Uh, and I actually have a personal podcast uh, called Bletsopia, which has very little to do with training. Mm-hmm. It has a lot to do with just, uh, if you want to hear like daily ramblings, uh, not quite Joe Rogan style, <laughs> but uh, but it's definitely like whatever interests me that day, I just post it up on uh, on Bletsopia. So yeah, th- those are the few things. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Michael Bletso. Uh, I think, I think I... Uh, plugged everything awesome yeah well i even uh i really like the barbell business podcast as well you know not being a gym owner but i can find benefits just running an online business so i think it's just you know general fitness business because you don't see a lot of you know podcast or really a lot of material generated towards you know the the fitness entrepreneur really yeah the, i mean the advice is really just business advice. yeah yeah and we uh-huh. since we have experience with the gym business uh-huh. We try to niche it down to there, yep. um, but yeah, we we try to focus on just those folks because those, those are the folks uh-huh. I, I care to interact with the most. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh huh. I, I actually at one time was living in my gym uh-huh. because I didn't make enough money to pay rent, so I went from like making negative money almost uh-huh. <laughs> to making you know running a very successful su- successful gym and then helping to, to start a second gym. So we kind of like. It's not like we started with money and we're just good at managing things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we built something from practically nothing and, and now it's uh, something that produces profits. And I think, I would hope that people are attracted to that. Oh, I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. so like, you normally, know, one thing like, just uh, for me personally, I like to, to I'm kind of gravitated towards successful people in any, you know, you know, not necessarily just fitness, but, you know, just listen to successful people in other business or, you know, successful athletes, just, you know, I, I feel like successful people kind of all have a certain sense about them, you know, probably sounded, yeah. sounded uh, wrong, but. <laughs> no, I mean, you get around certain people, you can kind of tell, you know, what's, you can tell who's confident in what they're doing, and, and there's definitely, I, I would say most of my business uh, education has come from people that were not in the fitness business. Yeah. Like, I, I really like looking outside the industry. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, it, that, I mean, there well for one looking outside of the industry. There's more. There's obviously a lot more successful business people outside of the industry than inside of the industry. So only looking inside of the industry is kind of limiting your yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and then maybe you'll come up with something new that no one thought of. Yeah, and kind of bring it to each other in the same industry. Yeah. It just turns into incest. Yeah, it's really just sharing ideas, really more than any bringing anything new in. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. I'll be in contact with you. Thanks a lot for doing this. All right, Colin, man. I had a great time. No prep. All right. See ya.